What's up guys, back at it again today we got the Power Pack Color for the Game Boy Color. It allows for 10 hours of continuous gameplay on one charge. We love checking out crazy accessories like these on the channel, so without further ado, let's get into it. So here it is, our Power Pack Color. It comes in two pieces, we have the adapter and the actual Power Pack. We'll have to use this thing plugged in today because I don't quite have it charged up. Okay, so I have the other side of this cord plugged into the wall. I'm going to plug it in now. The cord's a little bit yellow, but I thought if it was going to explode that I would record it. So here we go. So far so good. Let's get it battery check here it shows the battery via bars but it shows full power right now because we're plugged in let's turn the game boy on okay, so we'll just test this out a little bit on donkey kong country and right away i can tell you it feels pretty good adding a little bit of thickness to the game boy color is quite the good thing so after playing with this thing for a little bit i can tell you that it honestly feels pretty good with that added thickness some of the complaints of the vertical game boy series is that they are too small for people with bigger hands and if the battery pack lasts for an actual 12 hours that'll just be an added bonus What's up guys, back at it again today messing around with the Game Boy printer yet again. The original paper came in these three different colors and it had a sticky back, but we're also going to try out some receipt paper as well. The game we're going to use is Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, a classic from back in the day. It had a few different options that utilized the Game Boy printer, but my personal favorite was the banner editor. that allowed you to type in some custom text and print out a banner in the Nintendo style. So we'll go inside the toy box and enter our own custom text and then hit print. I actually didn't put enough paper inside the printer itself to finish it off, but you can just see how light it is after all these years. Next, we'll cut down some receipt paper and test that out. It is a lot thinner than the original stuff, so you kind of have to help it along at times. I forgot to, so some of the text kind of ran into itself there, but you can just see how much better of a result you get with some receipt paper. What's up guys, back at it again today with another weird Game Boy accessory. Today we got the Dragon Advance Boy for the Game Boy Advance, the desktop power base. There are so many weird Game Boy accessories and I won't stop till I get them all. Let's check it out. Upon further investigation, we have a corroded battery here and this outlet here appears to be European. So check out the channel for more accessories that I did test out. If you love the Game Boy Advance SP but felt like the screen was too small, well boy do I have the product for you. Today we got the Mad Cat Screen Enhancer. If you've ever wanted to play your Game Boy Advance SP through a magnifying glass, well here's your opportunity. Although I'm not really sure how this would work in the sun. What's up guys, back at it again today with a little Game Boy printer easter egg. We've shown this before on the channel with some faded Game Boy printer paper, but today we cut a strip of some new receipt paper and we're going to check it out. What you'll have to do is hold down feed when you turn on the Game Boy printer and you'll get this little message. You get a little hello from Mario and a picture of a Game Boy as well. There aren't many games that take advantage of the infrared sensor on the Game Boy Color, but interestingly enough, the Mission Impossible game does. It actually has this neat little feature that allows you to control your TV via programmable buttons. Let's test that out. Inside of the game's menu, you'll find this option to go to the Asian Organizer. So you go over to the Remote Control option, you go up to the TV, you will click learn signals and you have to have your remote handy dandy by you so i will pick a for power a will start blinking we'll link the infrared sensors up together i'll press power the a button will stop blinking and we are ready to go so now we're over at our tv go down to send signal and click a button for power takes a second to get the tv to turn on but there it is i also have the volume buttons programmed so i can control the volume I always thought that was pretty cool and it honestly is probably one of the games that takes advantage of the infrared sensor the best. Let me know if you knew about this. You've surely heard of the Game Boy Color, but today I'm going to show you my Game Man Color. I've heard this claim made before on YouTube, but today I'm going to show you the definitive edition. So we have our grip here with the 12 hour batteries. We have ours plugged in using it as kind of an adapter today. We have the joystick overlaying on top of the D-pad that feels kind of snappy and pretty good. We have the raised A and B button that kind of feels like the bottom of a shoe, but it also feels pretty good. We have the Game Boy Radio by performance that allows you to listen to your favorite radio stations while playing your Game Boy because you know everybody needs that. Also we have the light player that magnifies your game and has a little light on it allowing you to play in dimly lit conditions and or the dark. We're going to be playing uh, Pokemon Yellow today so what else could we add to this thing? I think we got room for a Game Shark or something like that. So yeah, the Game Man Color. You're surely familiar with the Game Boy Camera, the device that allowed you to take pictures and selfies from your Nintendo Game Boy console but did you know they also made 
Game Boy cameras for other consoles such as the Game Boy Advance. Today we got the Nyko Worm Cam. If you're familiar with the videos on the channel, you've probably heard of Nyko before. They're the ones that made those original little worm lights here. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see me pop this thing open and maybe a longer form video. Today we got the Handy Pack Color for the Game Boy Color. It's uh, this crazy peripheral from Interact. We got a joystick on the left here. It's kind of crunchy. You can feel it as like lock points. I don't know how good this would actually work in practice. We got a raised A and B button down here. A couple speakers that you attach through the bottom here. Look at this. Look at this. And would you believe it? It still works. I think you got to go under here. I don't want to break anything. So I'll just flip this up. Flip this up. We're in action. Let's turn the Game Boy on. Listen to that. We got my copy of um, Pokemon Pinball, Japanese version in here. Yeah, let me know if you'd use this down in the comments. What's up guys? Today I'll be showing you how to play Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games on your GameCube. What you will need is a GameCube, the Game Boy Player, the Game Boy Player CD, and a controller of course, but today we'll be using Game Boy Advance through the use of this cable here. Now, mind you, assembling all these can be kind of like assembling Exodia. So now that you got everything turned on and connected, you just turn on the Game Boy Advance. You hear a little notification, and it'll show you got the Game Boy Player connected. There it is. And you are ready to go. Just playing like normal. But on your TV now. What's up guys? Today we are back with another crazy Game Boy accessory for the Game Boy Color this time. We have the light player from a company called Color Boy Game Accessories. They got a lot of other stuff we're going to probably have to check out in the future. But without further ado, let's check this thing out. We got our copy of Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. And we will get going. These buttons, the A and B button feel pretty good. The joystick is quite responsive. It's not as crunchy as some of the other ones we've tried on the channel. This actually comes apart into two pieces, so I think I'm going to pull this off. I like the regular buttons better. Let's turn the light off and try out the light. Wow. This would have definitely came in handy back in the day. I would have killed for this thing. Could do without the magnifier. I don't know. Let me know. Did you have this thing back in the day? Would you use this thing now? What's up guys? Back again with a crazy Game Boy accessory. Today we have the FM radio for the Game Boy Color. This one's called the Tiny Tuner by Performance. It allows you to listen to the radio while you play your Game Boy games. I don't know why you'd want that, but if you did back in the day, this was an option. Let me know if you had this thing back in the day and how it worked. We just opened this up on the channel and we've been having a lot of fun with it. Our headphones kind of disintegrated over the time, but that's okay. We got a new pair, so check that out on the channel if you want to see the full video. Do you know the game Perfect Dark, the unofficial sequel to 007 Goldeneye, actually originally planned to allow you to scan your face into the game using the Game Boy camera and the Game Boy attachment for the N64? Jeez. What's up guys, back at it again today we got another crazy Game Boy accessory. Today we got the stereo amplifier for the Game Boy Pocket, which I just love the form factor of. I just finished up a long form video on this thing that I will link down in the comments. Let's check it out. The first thing we'll do is see how this thing sounds without it. Okay, doesn't sound too bad. That's that classic Game Boy Pocket sound. Let's test the stereo amplifier out. Okay. So this is a sound that will forever haunt my nightmares. I'll try adjusting the volume. I mean, I guess it's a little more tolerable on the lower levels, but if you turn this thing all the way up, wow. What's up guys, back at it again today, messing around with the Game Boy camera. One of my favorite Game Boy accessories of all time. This one was requested to me by Wolfpack down in the comments. I'm gonna show you a little Easter egg hidden inside the Game Boy camera. If you keep hitting run, you'll get one of a bunch of animations, some of which haunt my nightmares for almost 20 years now.
What's up guys, back at it again today we picked up this Galoob Game Genie, the classic cheating device for the Game Boy or Game Enhancer as they called it. This thing's in decent condition, it does work, although it is missing the little booklet in the back and the door is broken, but we can find those codes online, so let's check it out. So this thing just pops into the game slot here like a normal game would, and then we'll slot our game into the top of it. I've never been a big fan of how your games have to go label down, but... I guess that's okay for demonstration purposes, and then you can just turn your Game Boy on like normal, and we're ready to go. Game Genie was originally designed by a company called Codemasters, but it was later sold by Comerica and Galoob. It was first introduced in 1990 on the NES, but it was later sold for the Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Sega Genesis, and Game Gear. Today we're going to test out the Always Have Powerball code on Super Mario Land, one of my favorites. This thing modifies game data and allows users to do things that were unintended by the developers. This later led to a lengthy legal battle with Nintendo, but that deserves a video all in itself. Today we got The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening and this Game Boy Game Genie. Let's check it out. The first thing we have to do is type in our code. Today we're going to be using a code that gives us 255 rupees for everyone. I'm not quite sure why they use that specific number, but it's quite useful in a game like this. Either way, I no longer have to grind out rupees for that specific item. Some might call me a cheater, but I guess I am a cheater, but I'm only cheating myself. Here I am after acquiring my sword for the first time. The first thing I'll do is pull out my shield twice because I forgot the buttons, and then we'll grab that rupee. There we go, 255 rupees for one, essentially giving us access to infinite rupees. What's up guys, we are back with another crazy Game Boy accessory today. Today we have the Handy Grip Battery Pack by Performance, a crazy Game Boy accessory from the year 2000. I have my Game Boy Color here, let's get this thing on. Okay, so now that we got that on, it feels really good. We have these raised buttons here. This one kind of wiggles around like a joystick. I like the ergonomic grip. It looks a lot less yellow than it did in the packaging. We have to plug this thing down here into the DC 3 volt in, and sure enough, we get power. This thing claims to have 14 hours of battery life. Now, I don't know about you, but that would have been awesome back in the day as batteries were not cheap as you may know we are on a great value budget on the channel and this thing may have came in handy but i don't know how i feel about long extensive gaming sessions on this but it's pretty cool and i like the way it looks and i want to put it on the shelf what's up guys back at it again today messing around with the game boy advanced wireless adapters that will also work on the sp of course allowing us to do away with the old link cables today we'll be heading into the pokemon wireless club union room and pokemon fire red and leaf green the wireless adapter does also work with emerald as it was bundled with all these games the first thing we'll do is set up a pokemon for trade this works a little bit differently than your typical trading system but works just as well the wireless club also has the options to send a greeting battle and send messages through a chat feature that kind of reminds me of the Nintendo DS's Picto Chat. Back in 1989, or for me, through most of the 90s, handheld gaming looked a lot different. Nowadays, you kids have it pretty easy with your smartphones, ROMs, and high-definition screens. But if you wanted to play your Game Boy back then, in a dark room or dimly lit conditions, you needed something like the Light Boy. It also had this magnifying glass on it. Mine's pretty scratched up. My first memory of seeing something like this was walking around Blockbuster, and I saw a kid with one, and I thought he was the coolest kid ever. Anyways, let me know down in the comments what your memory is of this, and what what crazy attachments you had for your Game Boy. What's up guys, back at it again today with the Game Boy Advance SP, arguably the best Game Boy and Game Boy Advance experience you can get on an OEM console, specifically the AGS 101 variant that has that improved screen. It goes between bright and dim instead of on and off. The only problem I ever had with this thing that was a little annoying back in the day was the fact that it didn't have an audio jack, especially when trying to play games at night. I picked up this dongle online, it was pretty cheap and it restores that feature, it just plugs into the extension port. It would suck, I guess, if you were trying to play and charge at the same time, but I thought this was pretty cool. Today we got the Game Boy Advance Radio by Intech this time. We got a little power switch here, a green LED indicator to show it's on. You get two volume settings, uh, high and low. You just get a little scan option here, so you can't really tell what radio station you are on, but you scan through it to find your favorite radio station. Each time you turn this thing off, however, it does reset that, so it's a little bit frustrating. There's a little extension port here on the top so that you still have an extension port. We look, put the Game Boy Light on here. Anyway, on the side, you have where we put the headphone adapter in here. I don't want to get any copyright infringement, so I won't let you listen to any music. What's up, guys? Back at it again today with what I would call the ultimate Game Boy Color setup. On the bottom here, we got the Power Pack Color by Performance that provides us with 10 hours of rechargeable battery life. 
It's also got this cool little battery meter here that's showing full power because we're using ours as an adapter today. It also has that feature. On the left, we have the Tiny Tuner by Performance also, which is a little radio that you can attach to your Game Boy Color and listen to your favorite radio stations while playing your favorite game. On the top here, we got the Light Player, which adds a little light and some magnification to allow you to play in dimly lit situations or the dark. And last but not least, we have the little joystick and extended buttons here, which feel pretty good for the A and B button, but the joystick feels pretty crunchy. Let me